In this video, we will see how to work with Azure Queue Storage using Python SDK. We are going to create queue under storage and our queue name is going to be queue 360. So before actually going over this diagram and before going it programmatically, let's go to Azure UI platform and see like how we can create it using UI, how we can push record and how we can consume record from queue. So let's go to Azure portal now. Here, first of all, you need to go to your storage account. So I will click on my storage account, which is already created. If you don't have this account created, then you can click on create and create a storage account. And if you don't know how to create it, then you can refer blob storage video in this playlist. So let me click on this. And after that, you can see this queue option over here. You have to click on queue and then you will see this plus queue option. You need to click on this queue and you need to provide name to your queue. Now, as soon as you create your queue over here, you can see you are getting a URL. At the last, you can see your queue name also, and this is going to be your base URL for queue. This is important because uh, using this URL only, we are going to access this queue programmatically. Now, if you see any kind of error while creating this queue, then what you can do, you, you can go to access control and you can see whether you have the access to create queue or not. So in this case, what you can do, you can click on add role assignment. And as soon as you click on add role assignment, you will see a lot of options over here. We need to go at the bottom and uh, look for storage queue. And here you can probably go for data contributor role because this will give you access to read, write and delete. So you can select this, you can click on next. And after that, you can select user group and service principal. Then you just click on select member. And then here you will see your email ID. You just have to select it and assign it to yourself. So here you will see this email ID. You need to select it and then assign it to yourself. So as soon as you select it and assign it to yourself, you should be having access to create this queue. So let's go to our queue because it has been created already. Now you click on your queue which you have created and you can see this kind of UI over here. If you want to push any messages to this queue then we have to click on this add message and here you can write your messages. So I can write this is my first message and you can see an option over here at the bottom for the retention of this message. So from here you can select the second minute and hours and here by default it's taking seven days. So after seven days, this particular message is going to be deleted from this queue automatically. And till seven days, this particular message is going to be in the queue. And at the bottom, you will also see one option where if you want to persist this message forever, then you have to select this option. And here you will also see the by default, it's selecting to encode this message body in base 64. So base 64 is the binary format and it is a recommended approach. And if you do not want to have this message base 64 encoded, then you can uncheck it. But why this base 64 is required for that? Actually, we can go to Bing and ask this question and you can see there are several benefits of encoding any particular message to, to this base 64. So the main benefit what I see over here is the efficiency and compatibility with non-text data because there could be a scenario where your message may contain non-text data, could be some special correct, and that can trigger some kind of weird behavior while consuming those messages. But you will want to make sure like you want to push that record and you want to get it consumed, then it's better to convert it into that base 64 encoding and accordingly, uh, you know, consume that message in that format and then decode it to convert it into text. You can pass non-text data and you can also pass like images and all those things and there won't be any problem in producing and consuming the messages. Efficiency is also one of the benefit because binary data is supposed to be more space efficient than the text one. So we can actually push a lot of record within the same space limit. So these are the benefit of binary encoding and that's why it is advised to use it. That's why you can see by default is selecting this option but if you do not want to use it if you want to keep it in a text format only then you can just uncheck this box so i will just keep a message like this and i will click on ok and after that you will see okay this message has been pushed over here you can see the insertion time is this message is going to get expired in seven days so you can see a time over here according to that and at the last you can see the dq count so what this dq count suggests so every time when you are consuming a messages from here it's going to dq it's going to do take this record from the queue and you can see as soon as I clicked on this DQ message, this particular message has been, you know, consumed from here and it has been gone. Let me add another message. I can also uncheck this box. I can send it in the text format and then I can the second message. This I can encode it, right? I can select this particular message and I can DQ it. And here you are seeing uh, this option again, where you're saying, are you sure you want to remove the first element in this queue? I can click on select. 
and suppose okay there are a lot of messages and you do not want to remove it like one by one then you can also click on clear queue and if you refresh it you can see the messages has been gone this is how actually you can handle the messages you can create and consume messages from queue this was just for an overview and now we can go to our diagram and see like what exactly we need to do to access it programmatically so now you can see okay, we have already created this queue over here second thing what we need to do like we need to give access to our service principle so that we can access this queue programmatically as you know we will go to our portal again here i will click on this iam i'm doing it at storage level so in this case what would happen like if i'm applying a particular access over here it will get applied to all data storage so first of all i will check for the access whether we have it already i will search for my service principle and i can see there is nothing in this case what i'm going to do i'm going to add a role assignment and then i will look for this as your q1 and i'm going to provide the data contributor role because i want to read right from here there are other uh, accesses also which you can use it but i will go with data contributor for my use case so i will just click on next after that i will select member and here i will search for my service principle if you don't know how to create a service principle then we have already covered it in our first video in this series uh, you can go over it just to understand how to create it i will click on select and then i will review and assign and at the top you can see this uh, service principle is now having access to storage queue data contributor this part is done now we do have access now our service principle is having access to this queue storage in the next part we have to write a code and before we write a code what exactly we need to do because we are going to deal with this queue storage so what i will do i will go to my visual studio and then i will fire this particular command it's your storage and you can see in my case the requirement is already satisfied but if you are trying to access it first time then you can see the packages are going to get installed so once this is done then we can go to our code quickly and we can see how to produce records to our queue you can see i have created two packages over here one is where we don't have to apply any kind of encoding and second would be uh, where we can send the record with encoding so first of all i will go with without encoding and i will go over it step by step it's going to be same what we were doing earlier the client id tenant id and secret we are going to get it from service principal only the account url is going to get changed so in environment file you have to pass this as your q url and as we have seen earlier you can get it from here so go to your queue and you will have this url just make sure you don't add it this one take the base url which is from here to here and then put it into your code here you can see i have just passed this as your q url and once you have this url in the next step you can pass your q name so in my case the q name is q360 so i have passed this name and after that we just have to create a credentials using the client tenant and secret and then we can go ahead and access our queue to access the queue i am using this queue client and you can see it requires three parameter basically account url queue name and credentials credentials we have got it from here queue name we have passed it here and the account url we are retrieving it from here so once you have these three variables passed then you will have this queue client created now using this queue client we can retrieve or send messages to our queue so in this case what i am doing i have this file which is on my local which is queue input.txt and it has around 100 lines in it i am going to read this file line by line and i am going to push it to our queue and we'll see whether all these messages has been pushed or not i will go to my produce code i'm reading this file and taking all the lines of this file and then going over it one by one and then using this queue client i am sending all these lines to our queue using this send message method let's try to run this and see whether the messages are going to be pushed to our queue or not i'm just going to trigger this particular program now and you can see the program has been completed so in this case what should have happened i haven't got any error so when i click on this i should be having all the messages reflected and you can see like all the messages got reflected over here it has taken the default timing which is going to be seven days and you can see because none of the messages has been consumed as of now so the dq count is zero i can just you know click on this clear queue and it will delete all the messages from the queue so let's clear it and let's refresh it now so we know like how we can push all all these messages programmatically and you can see like we haven't encoded anything but in our next program we are going to encode the messages we are going to you know send it into
do this base 64 encoding how we can do it everything else is going to be same but here you can see i have just passed additional parameter over here which is message encode policy here i am passing binary base 64 encode policy and this binary base 64 encode policy is coming from here so it's a part of storage queue only but along with queue client i am also uh, taking this binary base 64 encode policy and after that once you have that this message encode policy then while sending messages we also have to use this encode map and here you can see it's by default taking utf8 that's why we are not passing anything over here specifically for each and every line i have to encode it in, into the byte format so that it can be converted into base 64 because as per the policy if you see if the input content is not bytes then an error is going to be raised so just to make sure like this is going to be get converted into base 64 first of all we have to convert it into byte and to convert it into bytes what we can do we can take the line encode it and send it if we don't follow this then we are going to get an exception so let me show you first so suppose if i don't encode it into bytes and i try to run it then you can see uh, we have got this error where it's saying the message content must be byte for base 64 encoding right so that's why it's important if you are using this particular policy base 64 encoding policy you want to send it your message in the binary format considering the benefits what we get so you have to encode this so i will just you know use this method encode and that's it now i will try to send this message again so it has been triggered now actually we wait for this program to be completed and then we will go to our azure queue just to see whether all the messages are reflecting over there or not okay so the program has been completed now we can go to our portal again and here i'm going to refresh it and you can see all the messages are reflecting over here so that's how actually you can produce message to your queue programmatically now the first part is completed we can see we have taken a file we have read it line by line and then we actually we pushed it into this queue now the next part is like once the messages has been pushed to to this queue how we are going to consume it programmatically right so in this case we are going to follow this approach now we have the messages in the queue which are base 64 encoded we need to take this message out to convert it into a text we have to decode all these messages i have created another queue over here 360 poison this is to handle any kind of error scenario so while consuming if you are facing any kind of problem then you can automatically route that messages to this q360 poison rather than stopping your process or encountering any kind of you know exception here in this azure queue storage you are not going to to get it automatically uh, you have to create it by your own like how you have created q360 then you have to manually write a code to handle error scenario so that like whenever actually you are encountering any kind of error that can be pushed to q360 poison now the same thing can be achieved automatically with azure function so if you are dealing with queue storage using azure function then you do not have to create this particular queue by your own while consuming messages if you are encountering any kind of errors then azure function provides the capability where it will automatically create the poison queue and it will route all those messages to this queue which later on can be used for you know manual intervention so this is how it can be done because here we are just dealing with azure queue storage so we have to create another queue over here which is going to be q360 poison to handle error scenarios so let's see how to do it so first of all i will go to my uh, azure portal and i will create another queue over here so let me let me go to queue and here i will just create poison queue now you can see we do have two queue and here you can see you know the base urls is same still same it's just that the queue name is different and it is going to have like similar you know structure and as of now we don't have any messages over here our queue 360 poison has been created now we will go to and, and check like how to consume it so i will go to my consume code and here we know like all the messages are base 64 encoded so what exactly we need to do right so now actually we have to pass two q name one is going to be q360 another is going to be q360 poison and then again because we want to access q so we have to create our credentials and you can see here we have created two q client one for each q so this particular queue is going to handle our base queue and here you can see because we want to we are trying to consume the messages so instead of using binary in base 64 encode policy we are using binary base 64 decode policy and in another queue which is going to handle this 
360 poison and here specifically as of now i haven't passed any decode policy to retrieve messages from the queue instead of send messages we are going to use this receive messages once you use this receive messages it will take all the records from the queue and put it into this variable to trigger a scenario where a message is, is going to be pushed into poison 360 queue i'm going to manually introduce a message in our queue where it will contain this er error text and as soon as it identifies okay there is an error over here it's going to raise an exception error keyword found in message and as soon as this exception is raised you can see i am handling it over here and i am again using this send message to push this particular message into this poison and then i am just printing it out okay mood message to poison queue due to error and after that actually i am deleting this message because if you're not going to delete the messages then it's going to be there for seven days what i want in this case like as soon as the message is going to be consumed and it should be removed from main queue so now let's try to run this so we know like as of now whatever messages we have pushed to queue none of the messages contains any of the error text so i'm hoping like all the messages are going to get consumed from there so let's try to run it and you can see all the messages are getting printed over here line by line because of this thing and you can also see like we have decoded this messages because if you are not going to decode it then you are not going to get a text like this because it's already encoded in binary format so we need to actually decode it before we can consume it and to decode it we are going to use this message dot content dot decode in none of the messages we, we do have error text so all the messages are getting printed over here in the text format now let's go to our our port so now you can see all the messages have dq count as one so you can see like none of the messages are going to be vanished from here if you are using it programmatically only you can see the dq count gets increased it means all these messages has been consumed one time now suppose if i try to run this program again right without doing any changes so what would happen in that case messages are still in the queue so it will again try to read all these messages and here you can see the DQ count is going to get increased. So I will wait for this program to be completed first and you can see all the messages has been read. So I will go to my portal and then I will try to refresh it. And you can see the DQ count has been increased to 2. So that's very important. If you want to consume this message and you are expecting the messages should be deleted as soon as it has been consumed. So you have to manually delete it and you can delete it using this QClient.delete message. Now let's see like how we can introduce that error message, right? So for that, because we are looking for error text in our message. So what I do, I will add another message over here and I will see something error. This is an error message and then everything is going to be there we are pushing our code in the encoded format because in our consumer code we are decoding all these messages so i will just click on ok now you can see all the messages has been consumed but you see at the last this particular exception got triggered right moved message to poison queue due to an error and it's coming from here because we have intentionally introduced this error message and you can see this particular exception is got triggered as soon as this exception got triggered we have moved this message to our poison queue and then printed out this particular message and as soon as actually this message has been pushed to our poison queue this got deleted from our main queue so two things needs to check first of all actually we will go to our poison queue and we'll see whether it has any messages over here or not you can see one particular message has got pushed over here it has routed this particular message as per our requirement into poison queue and at the same time it has deleted this message from our main queue as well so how we can check it i want to check it programmatically and you can see dq count is now three let me try to run this again and what i'm hoping for all these messages the dq count is probably going to be four but at the bottom i'm not going to see this particular message so let me run this program again now you can see all the messages has read but this time actually we haven't got that poison queue message because that message was already deleted as soon actually it was pushed to poison queue and we have to write a code to delete it it was not automatically deleted if you want to push your messages to poison queue then it's not going to be done automatically you have to create your queue separately and then have to write a code so that like it can be pushed to poison that's all for this video thank you for watching